Welcome, folks, to another Fish Report Live. Thanks for joining us. Happy New Year. I'm Craig Fissinger. That is Ken Francis. We're your co-host back in our sound room. Well, I don't know if we have anybody back in the sound room tonight. Do we, Ken? Well, Craig, uh, it's a little thin back here in the sound room tonight. Uh, Heavy D and, and TK uh, right now both absent, but uh, we got uh, Minnow back here, so we're in good shape tonight. It's kind of like the old days, kind of like six yeah. years ago when we first started this uh, thing. I remember that, Craig. We had you and I in a milk crate and, and uh, Minnow helping us out, so... Yeah. Well, like I said, it's a new year. Excited to talk about a lot of sports in 2017. And tonight we're going to be talking some girls basketball and some boys basketball. Yeah, Craig, really looking forward to, to reviewing the Shelby County League girls' uh, standings. A uh, big week. Uh, you know, a lot of teams of the league starting to take shape right now. And also, Craig, a uh, live interview tonight with uh, one of the hottest teams in Division Four boys basketball right now, and that's the head coach of the Fort Laramie Redskins, Corey Britton. We'll talk to him live on the phone here in just a little bit in the second half of our show. Excited to get to that. They've got a big matchup this Friday night against a league rival, Rushi. And uh, tonight's poll question happens to do with that game. Yeah, well, Craig, uh, it's going to be a big atmosphere over in Rushi Friday night. And the poll question is, uh, when Fort Laramie travels to Rushi, who will win that game? Fort Laramie by less than 10 points, Fort Laramie by greater than 10 points, Rushi by less than 10 points, or Rushi by greater than 10 points? We'll check with uh, Ross and the telemetrics later on in the show and see what our viewers have to say. Is that what those those symbols mean? I, I never knew exactly what those symbols mean. I was always told it was an alligator's mouth, yeah. and whatever the bigger, you know, is eating the bigger number. So right. I'm not sure what less than more than means. I just know what uh, you're yeah, supposed to eat the bigger number, I guess. Mr. Kanapke, <laughs> my math teacher, taught me that, Craig. I'll never forget it. The, it always eats the bigger number. <laughs> well, that's all I know. But, uh, yeah, like Ken said, if you're watching us on the Fish Report Live page, you can scroll down, help us answer tonight's poll question. Looks like we've had a lot of Rushi people respond so far. Kind of looking forward to the Fort Army people responding. And, of course, if you're watching us on NK Telco or Game Face Ohio, we will have those results for you at the end of the show. All right, Ken, well, let's get things started talking some girls basketball. And like I said, a lot of big uh, matchups coming up here, getting into 2017, getting kind of exciting. I know we went over the league standings last week. Let's check them out again this week and see what's changed. Well, Craig, uh, Jackson Center still sitting atop the league standings. Uh, they're 3-0, and 7-1 and overall. Got beat the last night, I think, by a non-league game by New Knoxville. Uh, Bakken's, Craig, believe it or not, on 3-1 and and 8-1 and overall. They have not played in two weeks since they since they lost to Rushi. So that's a long layoff for the Trojans. Uh, Fort Laramie playing very well. You know, they just had that big win, a uh, non-league win over Versailles. They've got a big game Saturday as they come over to Rushi as well. Rushi, Craig, only three league games in the book so far, sitting at 2-1. and one. But, Craig, they might be the hottest team in the league right now at 9 and one and and i've seen them play a little bit recently and a uh, nice ball club over there for coach timmerman so uh the league standings are tight you got four teams up there within one game of each other yeah we see those matchups uh coming up thursday there at the bottom of the screen and let's talk about those matchups we've got annette bakken's uh you know that you mentioned the lady trojans playing their first game in two weeks and 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 as you mentioned their last game was their only loss against rushi so uh any chance the anna rockets can pull the upset on thursday night well, Craig, I think Anna has underachieved all year, and, and I absolutely do. I think that's going to be a tough matchup for Bakken's. I realize the game is at Bakken's, but take into consideration, Bakken's has not played in two weeks, a long layoff. You're always sluggish coming back from the holiday break, and, uh, you know, Anna is due. They're, they're 0-3 in the Shelby County League, uh, but they're approaching that 500 mark overall, and, and, you know, we've been waiting for the Lady Rockets to bust loose uh, all year, and uh, don't be surprised if that happens this weekend. Well, Anna played well on uh, Tuesday night 
night against Bell Fountain. And, and one girl that we've talked about a few times on this show this season, Macy Hulskamp, had a big game there, had a double-double, 15 points, 10 rebounds, kind of expected to – Games like that out of her all season. And another girl that I'm not real familiar with, but Bree Cuck, a girl that was three for three on three pointers with 13 points. So someone else stepping up there for the Rockets. And uh, I agree, they're a team that seems like they're due. And, uh, you know, again, Bockets hasn't played for a couple weeks, but uh, still stinging from that loss against Rushi. I imagine they've had two weeks to prepare, two weeks of their coach uh, talking to him, saying, hey, listen, we need to get back on track. I think I little disagree with you a little bit here. I think Bakken's, uh prevails in this game, but uh, I think it's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, let's move ahead, talk about the next game, and that is Rushi's going to visit Fairlawn, a Fairlawn team that doesn't have a win yet this year, Ken. Mm-hmm. Is this a game where we see Rushi play there, maybe their bench, and, and, and not too worry too much about the starters? Well, uh, they're going to have to stay sharp they've got a huge game saturday against fort Laramie. uh you know th- this is an easy one to pick you know rushi's going to win this game against fairlawn rushi's got a very talented uh girls team this year and uh uh the other night larissa, larissa polling had 23 points against a very respectable arcanum team and uh, we all know what uh, maria heron can do from the perimeter uh, tiffany hatcher a nice player janet cardania has been playing well as has uh cameo wilson and, and the rest of the lady raiders so great defensive play too from whitney plyman i was at the game last night Craig uh, she is just a defensive specialist she really gets after it uh, so are they going to rest their starters and for Saturday's game I don't think so I, I think they're, they, they've they got to stay focused they got to keep uh, things clicking on both ends of the floor and uh, they're going to have to be very well prepared to play a very fast improving Fort Laramie Redskin team yeah I agree with you you know Farrell just really really struggling that just that, that I'm sure they're looking to find a win any way they can uh, the only names that we ever seen the box scores there are the, the dungeon and Hules camp girls there's a Pierce girl over there, but just don't get a whole lot of scoring out of them. And you rattled off all the Rushi names, the the, the Heron and the Wilson and Kadan. You're all the girls scoring for over there. And, and of course, uh, again, Larissa pulling just hot as can be right mm-hmm. now. And I agree with you. Uh, Plyman playing great defense. Hatcher playing great defense over there. They mm-hmm. took a, uh, a girl from Arcanum on Tuesday night. Uh, the Stevie Jotting over there, a girl mm-hmm. that's a thousand point score, heading to Division Two uh, Cedarville mm-hmm. and, and averaging 18 points a game and pretty much held her to, to 10 points a game. A couple of those I think she got late in the game, but uh, did a very good job in there. I was really impressed with the Rushi team and really impressed with that defense. Yeah, they've definitely held a very good player in check all night. And, uh, you know, like I said, they, they've got uh, uh, the Raiders are on a mission right now. Coach Timmerman's got them playing well. They're very good to watch. Uh, they're getting great attendance at the games. And, and uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll keep it rolling for sure on Thursday night and uh, be a big contest for uh, for Coach Siegel and, and, the, and the Lady Raiders on Saturday. Yeah, we'll see what happens Saturday. I think that's going to influence my decision on who's the best around here maybe who wins that game and uh, uh but we don't forget about the fair or the excuse me the jackson center tigers and that's the last game we want to talk about they travel to fort Laramie on thursday of course uh, that's probably the biggest game on thursday night what do you expect in this game well, you know, you got Jackson Center sitting atop the league standings, Craig, uh, only one loss overall, but they're coming off a loss last night to to, to New Knoxville team that's, uh, you know, a, a, a decent team. But uh, Fort Laramie, Craig, they are just starting to play really well. They're 7-3 and three overall. They just had a huge win over uh, the undefeated Versailles Tigers. Uh, so you got two teams, uh, you know, really looking to for a big win here. You know, Fort Laramie's win would, would really tighten up the Shelby County League standings. Uh, Jackson Center, you know, they're looking to make a statement. You know, they, they need a, to rebound from their only loss of the season. You know, that's a tough one to call, Craig. I think it's going to be a very tight game. I think it's going to be low scoring, and uh, you know, it's just going to be one of them games where every possession means a lot. Yeah, I don't know what to think about Jackson right now. As you mentioned, their first loss of the season against New Knoxville, a team that they was up on by 10 points in the fourth quarter. They lost that lead, went into overtime, got beat, and then just... Uh, uh, not too long before that, maybe the Thursday before that, they played uh, New Bremen and just beat that team by three points. Mm-hmm. They actually started out behind in the first and second quarters, had a rally kind of in the third quarter to win that game by just by just three points. So uh, a couple games there where they, they, they haven't been able to put together four good quarters, and I know that's easier to say than do, mm-hmm. but uh, you know they got to figure out a way to, to, to get back on track and put four good quarters together. And, uh, yeah, I think they're struggling right now. And Larmy, as you mentioned, playing very well. Uh, we talked about them last week. You know, a couple injuries there, Abby Holdhouse, a good scorer for them. Mm-hmm. Marissa Meyer, a good scorer for them. Those girls go down. 
What do you know? Coach Siegel just seems to to, to get to other girls that picking the mm-hmm. picking up the slack there, and and girls that I guess we should expect. You know, some seniors have stepped up. You got uh, Sarah Stang. Sarah Stang, a senior over there, had a big game the other night against St. Henry, sixteen points in that game. Uh, Ryan Fry. Uh, you had uh, Lukey over there that that uh, did had a good game as well. A lot of boards in that game, and you had some other underclassmen step up as well. But uh, you know. Larmy's got three wins against MAC teams at St. Henry. You mentioned Versailles earlier. They beat them. And then the game before that, they beat New Knoxville team. We just talked about a little earlier here that beat Jackson. So three MAC wins in a row. I, I don't care who you're playing from the MAC. You get three MAC wins in a row. You know you're playing pretty well. That's right. And, and taking consideration too, Craig, this game is at Fort Lormie. That's always a little bit different environment playing at Fort Lormie. Big advantage for the home team there, especially on the girls' side. Uh, that floor is just extra long. It's a little wider. So, you know, a nice home court advantage for Coach Siegel and the Redskins there. I look for them to, to uh, you know, actually come out on top of this game over Jackson Center. I, I just think they're starting to gel at the right time. Uh, they will, you know, they've got, they've got a big game on Saturday. They've got back-to-back big games, actually, Thursday and Saturday. So they're going to have very little time to prepare for the Rushi Raiders, but uh, believe me, Coach Siegel is focused directly right now on the Jackson Center Tigers. She's going to take them one day at a time and see what happens. Yeah, I'm not I'm not t- under, underestimating a team that's got Cassie Meyer on it, Olivia Clark, and some of those other stars that got over there at Jackson, but I'm with you. I think Larmy pulls this one out, and uh, I think uh, Saturday's matchup, again, is going to tell us a lot about who's uh, who's in the driver's seat in, in mm-hmm. the Shelby County Athletic League. So, All right, well, that's going to do it for our girls' basketball talk. We're going to take a short break, but stay right there when we come back. We're going to talk some boys basketball, including that big interview with Fort Laramie coach Corey Britton. Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. And before the break, we were talking a little girls basketball. Going to talk some boys basketball right now, Ken. And uh, again, Shelby County Athletic League talked about them last week. Had an interview with Coach Spencer Gadania from Rushi. Looking forward to our interview with Fort Army Coach Corey Britton coming up here in a second. Before we do that, though, let's look at the standings and see where we're at right now in Shelby County Athletic League. Boys, and uh, what do we got? Well, Craig, uh, they're starting to take a little bit of shape. We're, we're finishing up the first round of the Shelby County League standings right now. Fort Lorme is sitting at 5-0 and in the league, 8-0 and overall. Uh, Farallon and Rushi, Craig, just one game behind. And you got Ann at 3-2. and two. And, and Jackson Center, they're surprisingly at 2-3 and three with three log- league losses already, Craig. So huge game Friday night. Uh, you know, Fort Lorme, like I said, undefeated on the season. And, and Farallon and Rushi trying to stay right there in the hunt with them. Yeah, I think those standings look awfully exciting. The top five teams all with winning records right now. And as you mentioned, the Fort Army Redskins in first place right now. They're led by head coach Corey Britton. We're happy to have him live on the phone right now. Coach Britton, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. 
Well, listen, Coach, congratulations on the great start you're 8-0 right now, uh, and that's not easy. And uh, I guess a perfect example of that was this past Monday night. You started the year with a tough road game at New Bremen. You started out sluggish, Coach, but you found a way to win. W- what did you learn about that game? Well, I just a little bit of everything in those type of games. Number one, I don't think our approach Monday night was very good. I don't think we were ready to play uh, mentally or physically. And second thing was, I thought New Bremen played really well. Um, they put some things together and made things difficult for us. And we got into foul trouble, and we had to rely on different kids to step up to get us through a lot of that second quarter. And um, it, it helps. I mean, we're not going to play well every night. And it's good to go through those games where you struggle a little bit, and you have to find a ways to win, and you have to get it out. And first to our kids, that's what they did. All right, well, listen, like I said, I know you started off, you're starting off really well this year, and, and one reason I, I, I guess I wonder is, I know your boys played a lot of summer ball, and uh, is that something you encourage, or, or how important do you feel is that to your success? I, I think it's important anytime you can get your kids with a, with a ball in their hand and an opportunity to get better, and, and we're, I'm so glad. All right, well, listen, Coach, we're familiar with some of the, the bigger names on your team, guys like Dylan Braun and Tyler Siegel and Evan Burning, but you're also getting it done with a, a lot of support beyond those big three, haven't you? Yeah, I, I think it starts with our two seniors, um, Cody Gatson and Nate Plyman. They've just been outstanding for us. Going into the year, uh, one question mark we had was who was going to be our toughest guy, um, who was going to be that grit guy like Drew Warman was last year for us, and Cody Gaston has exceeded every expectation we've had this year. His leadership, his growth as a player and, and as a person, he, he's really held us together. He's really our glue. Um, he's not scoring as much as he as he probably wants to, but he's sort of taking a back seat to those three. But I, I have a feeling here soon Cody's going to break out for a big game. And he's shooting it really well for us. He's had some nights where he scored 10 to 12 points for us. And him and, and Nate is just a great guy. You know, a lot of things Nate does for us shows up in the box score. But he, he does a really nice job for us defending, rebounding, and just being our toughness out there. And we have two other juniors that are, we're starting to get into the mix, Austin Siegel and Jarrett Meyer. Um, both missed the majority of last season. Austin had a huge night for us on Monday night and, and really saved us. Coach, hi, this is Ken. Uh, just getting through the holidays, and uh, I want to ask you about a couple neat things you did uh, over the holidays with your, with your Redskin team, and, and the first being the third annual Holiday Helpers game. Um, you know, a great charity you guys give that to or, or down to Children's Hospital, and uh, can you tell our listeners a little bit about that and uh, uh, what makes that night so special? Yeah, this was our third year of our Holiday Helpers game. Um, anybody attending the game, we asked them to bring a toy, a brand new toy to donate to Dayton Children's Hospital. And if they bring a toy, they get a free bag of popcorn at the game. And, and luckily for us, we've been um, blessed to do it with three great communities. Our first year we did it with the Anna community. It went really well. Last year we did it with the Rushi community, and it went over awesome. And then this year we did it with the St. Henry community. And, and a lot of thanks to Coach Rosenbeck. He had his boys bring in a toy as they got off the bus. Really neat experience. And then last three years, we've donated over 2,000 toys to Dayton Children's Hospital. We collect them, we sort them, and we take them down there, and they actually let our kids on the floor, and we knock on rooms with um, somebody from the Child Life Center of Dayton Children's Hospital. We actually hand-deliver those toys to children in need during the holidays. and It's really heartwarming. It's, it's a great experience for our kids, and it, and it really shows you how blessed we are to live in such great communities that will take this charity event on like that. It's really a blessing, and I'm really proud of the way it's turned out and, and really thankful for everybody involved. Well, Coach, that's really special and a great thing for you to start over there at Fort Laramie. Uh, a couple other, or one other thing I noticed uh, during the holidays is, is you got an opportunity to practice down at UD Arena. Now, i gotta, I got to let you know here, Coach, I'm a huge Dayton Flyer fan, and when I first seen this on social media, I was like, okay, what's the connection here? Is, is Coach Britton uh, 
hanging out with uh, my uh, my uh, honor coach uh, Archie Miller over there, or, or what's going on? So, what was your connection, and how did you get on that floor? Oh uh, no, um, I actually just emailed uh, the director of the arena and sort of touched base about him and told him sort of what we did with the holiday helpers game, and we went down there on the same day. We delivered toys. So we just sort of tied the two events together, and we needed a place to practice, and we delivered toys at 1 p.m. So um, we just rented out the facility, and we had it all to ourselves. It was it was really neat. We got there nice and early, and we walked down the tarmac hill there right onto the arena floor, and somebody was there waiting for us and put us in a couple locker rooms, and we were off to practice at about 9.15. We practiced for about an hour and a half, and we gave the kids about 25 to 30 minutes on their own to shoot around, to dunk, whatever they wanted to do. It was it was a great experience. Kids had a lot of fun, and sometimes you just need to do that to break up um, the grind and the monotony of the season, especially during Christmas break. I mean, we practiced, I think, nine times over Christmas break getting ready for Jackson Center, so that was a good day just to get away and, and have a little fun. Coach, speaking of fun, it doesn't get any more fun than it's going to be Friday night over at Rushi's Clair Scene of O Gymnasium. Uh, you bring your undefeated Redskins over to Rushi to battle our Raiders. Uh, a couple years ago, you brought an undefeated Fort Laramie team over, and uh, it was early in the season, but things didn't go quite your way that night. What do I don't you... want to think about that game. <laughs> Sorry about that. What, <laughs> what do you expect the atmosphere to be like when you come into Rushi's small, friendly confines <laughs> Friday night for that battle? How do you prepare your kids? Well, well, first off, I hope it's friendly. It's, it's been very friendly to us in the last couple of years. So, um, no, we're we're really looking forward to it. It's it's going to be a great challenge. Um, number one, going over to play Rushi, and number two, playing in that gym and that atmosphere. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say it's going to rival uh, the Piqua atmosphere last year for the sectional final game. I thought that was an, a tremendous high school basketball atmosphere. And and Friday night, I don't I don't know if it can get any bigger or better than what it's going to be. I'm sure it's going to be a close-to-capacity crowd. It's going to be loud. Rushi will have their two student sections and those those <laughs> elementary kids screaming during our free throws. Uh, I think our kids are really looking forward to it. And, and that's what it is with high school basketball. It's about building experiences for our, for our high school athletes. And I'm sure Friday night will be a game that not only our kids won't forget, but Rushi kids won't forget. All right, Coach, listen, one more question, and I can't let you go without asking you about your assistant coaches. You know, I look down your bench, and I see a bunch of uh, assistants that were once pretty good players at Fort Laramie. Uh, you know, how much energy, Coach, do, the, do those guys bring to your practices and on game night? Uh, that, what, what they do for our program, um, it can't be described in, in a couple words. Ryan, um, Goldschmidt, Jim Meyer, and Jordan Plyman all had huge roles when they played in our program. And for me, sort of being an outsider to Fort Laramie, you need those type of people that have um, very respectful names, had very respectful careers, and have a ton of passion for Fort Laramie basketball. Every, every one of them has been through the grind and, and been through seasons at Fort Laramie. They've all had successful years. And they've all been part of the rich tradition. So having those, having those guys around our kids and just their knowledge is un- unbelievable. Jordan. Um, works with our post guys every day in practice. Coach Goldschmidt and Coach Meyer takes our guards every day during practice. It, it, what they give us is awesome, and, and I'm so thankful to have those coaches on board as well. I just it our our benches are they're they're fierce. They, we fight back and forth, but it's all for the greater good of the kids, and it's all because we have a lot of passion and want what's best for our for our boys. Coach, listen, uh, Fish Report uh, here. We, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule tonight to be on our show. Uh, can't wait to see you Friday night over at our friendly confines. We will be friendly, I promise. And uh, <laughs> But, uh, no, uh, you're doing a great job over there. Uh, always enjoy your, uh, your social media, uh, keeping, keeping us, uh, everybody involved over here. And, and uh, now keep it up over there at Fort Laramie, and, and uh, we'll see you Friday night. And great. We're looking forward to it, hopefully. Hopefully we can play well. Better than that about time two years ago, that's for sure. <laughs> Take care, Coach. Yep, have a good evening. Thank you. Yep. All right, that was the head coach of the Fort Army Redskins, Corey Britton. Do want to say special thanks to Fort Army photographer Ellen Worman for providing some of those great photos that we had on the monitor t- tonight. And speaking of great photos, Ken, and social media, saw a great photo this past week. Uh, another uh, thing that the basketball program did was honor a 10-year anniversary of the 
2007 State Baseball Championship. And a couple of the guys in that photo I saw, I think we had the photo here, well, I actually recognize there. Yep, uh, definitely some familiar faces in there. Uh, Rushi alum, uh, Coach uh, Bill Sturwald, head coach of the, the Fort Laramie Redskins there. He's been very successful uh, over there at Fort Laramie. Also, uh, Rushi's current coach, uh, Flippo, uh, there on the on the far right of your screen. Uh, he was uh, Coach Sturwald's assistant during that time. And uh, also you'll see Jared Hoyne in there, uh, yeah. major, major League Baseball player. So congratulations to uh, – Coach Sturwald, Coach Flippo, the whole team, and, and also especially Jared there for, for making the dream come true and, and making uh, small-town Ohio, small-town USA very proud. Fun stuff for them, I'm sure. And, uh, Ken, let's go back to the sound room and check in with who's back there tonight. Let's let's take a look. There's our guy, <laughs> Ross. He's running things tonight. And uh, eventually we got Coach Britton on the phone, had a little bit of problems there, but uh, Ross figured it out. And uh, he, he did a great job. Well, thanks a lot, Ross, for helping us out back here tonight. Yeah, yeah. no problem. It's been pretty great. <laughs> he had a step in for the two guys that decided to take the night off. So all right, well, he's doing well. All right, Ken, well, one more thing to get to, and that is tonight's poll question. Why don't you read that for our viewers again, and we'll have Ross check on the telemetrics. Craig, uh, we're talking uh, high school boys basketball, the big game Friday night at Rushi's Gymnasium. Uh, who will win uh, the game Friday night? Uh, will it be Fort Lormy by less than 10 points, Fort Lormy by greater than 10 points, Rushi by less than 10 points, or Rushi by greater than 10 points? So we'll go back to Ross, uh, check the telemetrics, and what's our voters saying tonight? The telemetrics say that Rushi will win more by more than 10, 50% chance. 50%? Wow. Well, the, the, the voting wow. must have changed there because uh, early I think all the Rushi people were online. Yeah. and. Uh, uh, yeah, there are about 24 people that voted for Lormy, probably. Okay, uh, they were well, stuffing the Rushi yeah. people were stuffing the voting box pretty early. It looks like Lormy <laughs> came on late there, so uh, we'll see what happens Friday night. Uh, you know, if the telemetrics uh, pans out, uh, or uh, but uh, we'll definitely uh, they'll tip it off Friday night, and we'll uh, let them play down on the hardwood. Yep. No about doubt. No doubt about that, and thanks for that report, Ross. All right, uh, Ken, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. I do want to say special thanks to Coach Britton for joining us live, as well as the viewers out there for tuning in. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, everyone, and good night. Don't need no pull when you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish report.